Hill Road in Wellington, 37 cars prepare for the North Island Hill Climb Championship. This year, strong competition to champion Bob Gibbons and his Cooper 1100 comes from Dick Campbell's smaller car and the big Cooper Climax driven by Ron Frost. They race against the stopwatch only, one car at a time. A special contact switch under the front wheel starts the stopwatch at takeoff. Things move fast. Many stock cars are entered, but it's soon obvious the racing cars will be out front. Gibbon's present hill record for the five-eighths of a mile is 43 and a half seconds. That is 51 and a half miles an hour. But now Frost is ready to tackle it in the Cooper Climax. Even as Frost reaches the corner, Gibbons backs in to start. At the finishing line, Frost is just too late. Now Gibbons. Four times Gibbons won here. Every bend's familiar, every corner known. He's over in record time. Half a mile an hour faster than last time and champion for another year. Where the Waipa River meets the mighty Waikato, Maori war canoes have swept through centuries of tribal fighting. Today they're racing in the Narawahia annual regatta. Before the coming of the Pākehā, these swift craft were the power of the river, the battle wagons of warring peoples. Today, first one under the bridge gets 25 pounds. Now the jumps. They've fallen in the water. One method is the over and under style. The more difficult, much more difficult way, is where horse and riders all go over together. really needs a larger size. See you later, alligators. Super Sabre jets of the United States Air Force skim over the North Island. They're flying to Ohakia to salute the Royal New Zealand Air Force on its coming of age. This special Air Force Day attracts more prosaic transport as well. 30,000 cars are on the road in what later proves to be the country's biggest traffic jam. But the drivers and passengers, 120,000 of them, forget their road worries as they take in the sights. The Governor General is with Air Vice Marshal Kay, Chief of the Air Staff, and Group Captain Turner of Ohakia. Air Chief Marshal Sir Ralph Cochrane is here, and the Minister of Defence, Mr Connolly, Air Marshal the Earl of Bandon, and Mr Skinner, the Acting Prime Minister. General LeMay represents the United States 5th Air Force. New Zealand's vampires thunder past in salute and the crowd moves among the 40 aircraft on show. As well as service teams from America and the United Kingdom, the Australian Air Force is here displaying Canberras. While an old-timer looks up the nose of a Canberra, a youngster tries to figure out the rear end of a Sabre. 
Taking the opportunity to get together, New Zealand and American pilots swap information and tall stories. Few of the American planes have been here before and they draw big crowds. Showpiece of the Royal Air Force is the Vickers Valiant, a bomber piloted out from England by a New Zealander, Wing Commander Trent. This traffic officer is interested in the Australian's Neptune aircraft. It goes backwards, just like a motor car. The Hercules, an American transport, demonstrates its amazingly short takeoff. Streaming up is a B-47 Stratojet from the United States Strategic Air Command. Details of the American KC-135, an aerial refueling tanker, are secret, but it's known to have a cruising speed of at least 600 miles an hour. New Zealanders from the SAS and their British instructors stage a parachute attack. Perhaps the most graceful aircraft at the show, a New Zealand Sunderland flying boat glides low. This is as close as a flying boat dare come to the runway. The Sunderland gives way to the Valiant, the White Ghost. Dignified and dangerous in a slow flying display, this great bomber can carry man's most terrible weapons, nuclear bombs. Small beside the Valiant, Harvards take their turn on the program. Veterans of the last war, they're now used by us only as training craft. Young American pilots are just as fascinated with our planes as we are with theirs. Most of them are too young to have seen a harbour. Dizzying loop, the Harvards straighten up. Spectators remain upset. The American Super Sabre broke the sound barrier on its first run in 1955. It hit over 800 miles an hour. Today, its top speed is secret, something well over a thousand, very definitely supersonic. the day our vampires turn on a display of high-speed flight formation aerobatics. Vampires level out, ending an occasion that's been a truly exciting 21st birthday.